What's up everybody? Welcome back to the San Diego Surf My League Expansion Series on NBA 2K19. We have ourselves a very big off-season episode today. We're coming off the second year of San Diego Surf Basketball, one that really didn't go well for us. We went 35 and 47 and played our best when we traded away one of our best players in Malcolm Brogdon. I still think this team has a chance to be pretty good next year with players like Casey Daniels improving after being drafted as a second round pick. With players like Frederick Wilcox, when he stays healthy, he's a really good shooter. Rodney Kane was drafted last season, and we picked up Jonas Valanciunas in free agency last year to make sure we had a good center. But what do we do this year to make things a lot better in year three? I think addressing the bench is a big step for us. We have to get a better second rotation so we can have more bench scoring. But I also think that adding a superstar around players like Valanchunas, Daniels, and Wilcox is a must. So we already went through some of the retirements, but nobody on our team. I tried to make sure our roster stayed younger this year, so we don't have too many aging veterans. Nobody on our staff retired, so we don't have to worry about that. Hall of Fame inductees, Dwayne Wade and Dwight Howard make it this season. And we move on to jersey retirements, Wade, Parker, and Howard. This is so cool how teams will retire numbers. It's a nice touch and it can show you some of the history as they keep track of stuff like this throughout the league as it continues on. League meetings. So I don't normally like having the rules change, but this is one I absolutely want. A lot of you wanted it in the comment section. We are going to let 18 year olds declare for the NBA draft. It's approved. But we are going to reject everything else. But this is so cool how you can change the rules year to year. League realignment, I don't think there's anything to do with that. So the draft lottery is up. We get to the draft, of course, before free agency. So. It's interesting going from so many like NFL off seasons where I'm doing free agency and thinking about the draft, but it's in reverse here. And I think our odds, yeah, seven. So there's a true difference maker if we can get that 7.4% to hit and we land at number one. There's a great point guard in this class that I love to have on the team, but I'm not counting on that. I think that in free agency, there's a good chance I go after a point guard, but we'll just have to see what the value is like in the draft, and at least we can... The more unpredictable event happens first, which is kind of nice. No surprises so far, the Blazers end up at number 12, and at 11, we have the Utah Jazz. So this is where we have to start checking for our team seven is our projection so if we can do any better then we kind of beat our odds in a way so number eight memphis grizzlies so we'll at least have our odds or better and hopefully we're not at number seven but so far it's been pretty cookie cutter and then we are here at seven no surprises at all so number seven it is we can still probably get a really good player but i don't know if addressing point guard at seven is going to be the best move for us the knicks had pretty good odds but they end up at five and then at four we have the denver nuggets so brooklyn so far seems to be one of the big winners only 8.9 percent odds they do a little bit better than their spot and then it's the Clippers. Oh, by the way, the Warriors were horrible this year, but they had given away their first round pick, so the Nets get that in addition to number 16. And the lottery winners this year are the Charlotte Hornets, who were the worst team in the NBA this season. They will be taking the top point guard, likely number one overall. We don't make any staff changes. Now it's time for the NBA Draft Combine, and we'll see who we can find as a possible fit for the surf. Wow, Jeremy Clancy, way stronger than anybody else in this class. Neil Goodwin hit the most standing 15-point jumpers, moving Andre Paxson. And then Neil Goodwin, Andy Marks, Leo Law. I am interested in Law with maybe our second selection. 
There's not a ton of information to get from here except for who the good shooters are and you know I have a lot of good shooters on this team so I'm kind of looking for some other skills at this stage. So we can invite 12 players. I already know everything about these guys. I'm not sure. I know there were some suggestions last offseason about who I should be inviting. Alright, looks like I shouldn't be inviting players who are fully scouted because I already have all the information I can get from them. So, we'll find other players. Let's invite Joel Hutchinson. He might be an option with our second round selection. We can invite Timothy Goodson, even though he can't sign for two seasons. Alright, Ted McKinney's only 21. I know 72% of his scouting profile, so we'll bring him in. Alright, I invited a bunch of players. The top shooter, it looks like, is Harry Flores, a point guard from Indiana. He's only 21 years old. The ceiling is Alfred Payton. A starting caliber player should have good success at the NBA level as he matures and he is the sixth ranked point guard so kind of a mid-round option early he does have some good playmaking skills but it is below average good mid-range not great inside or three-point so the skill set kind of reminds me a little bit of Frank Mason's which isn't one that I really think I'm great with right now Jamal Cole is an interesting player. He can play either forward spot. He's good at the mid-range and inside game. And he has good athleticism, high potential at the same time. Although I know potential here isn't necessarily exact. Alright, so let's get to the NBA draft then and see what kind of an impact we can make here on the team. I know that the first pick is likely going to be that point guard. What? CJ O'Neal Come on man Someone else is gonna get the point guard Charlotte takes a small forward. Okay Okay, that's surprising the Clippers. What are they gonna do? They take Perry Gill The star point guard from Texas who has like 13 badges on day one He is the player I was hoping to get but knew we probably wouldn't and then it's another point guard Chase Finley from UConn at least we don't have to wait too long. Ted Porter is drafted by the Denver Nuggets. And the Knicks. Curtis Turner from George Mason. One more selection before us. The Chicago Bulls. And they take Russ Park a center. And now, what can we do here? The top player on the 2K board is available. Guillermo Lopez. And he is a two-way power forward. Not sure if this is the right position to be addressing early on. He has B potential. Not sure if he's the right pick for us. There are some point guards here. A lot of you said that maybe due to size, they're not the best options. Ben Byers does have the playmaking that I wanted. Not really a good scorer. I do want someone who can really... Uh, distribute maybe work their way to the basket so I like an inside score I like somebody with playmaking and athleticism this isn't the right fit Lopez was projected to go third though so it would be good value at this stage he's a seven footer and that would be fun to add somebody else who maybe can be a good rebounder on the team he has high athleticism too for the position I'll consider Lopez but what else can we do Neil Goodwin, this would be a reach at this stage. He's another point guard who's really offensively focused with his skill set. C plus inside game. What's his potential at? A B minus. I have improved the draft class quality going into next year. I upped it from 50 to 60, so we should see some better prospects next year. But I've got to find someone to take right now. Luigi Esposito from Italy. We have not fully scouted him at all and this would be a major reach at this point good playmaking good three points yeah we just don't know enough Rudolph Williams from Arizona he can shoot we have a lot of shooters on this team he has B minus potential I feel like with my first pick being this high I have to take somebody with high potential I think I found a player I like here Jamal Cole 
Now, it would be a, a reach, but Cole has a good inside and mid-range game here. He's only 19 years old. He can play either forward spot, and our forwards don't exactly give us the best inside presence. Wilcox is a shooter. Rodney Kane can shoot as well. Cole would be a different type of talent, and he has good rebounding skills, above average athleticism, and the potential is an A-. So I think when I evaluate all the options here right now, Cole's my favorite. So I'm kind of looking at who offers the best like three years ceiling in that case, and I think Cole would fit our roster pretty well. Plus provide some needed depth behind Frederick Wilcox, who suffered a few semi-serious injuries in his couple of years already with the surf. So I think with that, Jamal Cole is the right player for us. And you can let me know what you think down below in the comment section. But I just think that was the best pick for us to make. He was one of the most coachable players that Arizona's coach has ever coached. Guillermo Lopez ends up going at number 9 to the Kings. I was intrigued by him. He was the top rated player. We have a trade to announce. Draymond Green is going all the way to Philadelphia. And uh, the Suns second round pick so the Warriors can trade up. And what are the Warriors trying to do after being the third worst team in the NBA? Bobby Dame from George Washington. 6'7", 234, power forward. Can't remember anything about his skill set. The Force are on the clock, and they take Joel Hutchinson, one player I was intrigued with from Michigan State. Wonder how far away we are from our second round pick. I actually really like the second round. Oh, come on, they took Leo Law. I'm not sure if I would have taken him, but he was definitely somebody I was considering. The Surf are almost on the clock. Ricky Singleton is off the board, and now it's our turn. And we are going to be selecting, hopefully, somebody good. Although I have not really scouted the remaining point guards, which means probably my favorite, like, 13 options are now gone. Yeah, we don't have a lot of great options here. I don't know if we're getting anybody with Casey Daniels or even Alexi Edwin impact in this second round. This is... A pretty weak second round group of players. I've scouted only a handful of them, but we're not really looking at the same situation as in the past. Oscar York is the highest rated player. He's 7'3", 239 pounds, and he doesn't really have great offense. He's more defensively focused, which is somewhat interesting. Let's take Oscar York. He has the highest overall. He's a good rebounder. He's our selection. I thought about even taking a player that couldn't sign for a while, but I just didn't see the right talent for us, so we are hopefully going to see better draft classes for the rest of the series. We'll see if 60 is enough, but I did increase it in the last episode, I believe, or the one prior, forget exactly. I have a second pick to make in this round? Totally forgot about that. All right, we have four trade offers. I'm about ready to take them. Do I want a second round pick four years from now? Maybe. Well, that's the best I can do. I might as well. I'll trade with the Pacers. They can have this selection if they want it. All right, so the NBA draft is over and CJ O'Neal was the highest rated player it would appear. So that's why he went number one. I thought Perry Gill would go number one for sure. Great scorer, especially outside. He's a playmaker. He's athletic and had A- minus potential. I thought he'd be a great fit for us, but he goes to the Clippers. CJ O'Neal at number one, by the way. He can shoot for sure. Six foot eight, 224 pounds. Good athlete for the position. Okay, not bad. Do they have like a ceiling player for him listed? Oh, Gallinari, okay. Who do they ever compare Jamal Cole to? Charles Smith. I'm not sure who that is. I don't know my basketball history all that well, not like football anyway, but Charles Smith was drafted back in 1988 and played until 97 with the Clippers, Knicks, the Florida Beach Dogs, and the San Antonio Spurs. The Florida Beach Dogs are now the Rapid City Thrillers. 
and they were a semi-professional team. But what do you think about taking Jamal Cole in the first round? We have a player with 81 potential, which is all right. He's depth behind both Kane and Wilcox, so that's cool. He can come off the bench and kind of grow into that role, and I wanted to get the bench stronger anyway. His stealing ability might be pretty good here. We could use some more turnovers for sure. He is a good dunker, and he also has a good layup game. Okay. I like this skill set, though. I think it fits our team. Looks like from the projections, by the way, he was supposed to go number eight, and we took him at seven, so it really wasn't a reach. So he has the drop step ability in the post, a pick and pop receiver, put back king, up and under specialist, has no problem expressing his feelings, and he values team success more than anything. He's a team player. Oscar York, by the way, 72 overall with 81 potential. Not bad. I think that's not a bad second round pick. Not all second round picks are going to bring a ton of value. But let's accept these deals then. Why would I decline that? I drafted him. It's only 940k. We can play him at the G League or something. Team and player options are up next. All right. And we're accepting all of these options. Nice. I had a team option here for Jonah Bolden. Not sure if that was even my contract or anything, but we're accepting all these deals. Oh, Paul George had a player option, so he's not going to be hitting free agency at all. And then Donkic is going to be accepting. Aiton accepted. Blake Griffin accepted. Okay. Who declined? Spencer Dinwiddie. And he's somebody we could go after as our starting point guard. That would not be a bad fit, and the salary would be nice. We're of course giving Casey Daniels the qualifying offer. We're not going to extend it to Frank Mason or Royce O'Neal. Casey Daniels is now considered an offensive superstar, by the way. And now, free agency is here. What can we do today? Jason Tatum is a restricted free agent, so a lot of these players their teams can match offers. The top unrestricted free agent is Spencer Dinwiddie, who I think would be a decent fit for us. I targeted him a couple episodes ago, possibly, as being somebody we could have. But it doesn't look like we have a great chance to get a superstar with these all being restricted free agents. Oh, wait a minute. I have to negotiate a deal here with Casey Daniels. He has an offer. He's expected to make $21 million a season. I didn't know we were already here. And the offer is just the qualifying offer so far. So I don't... I have to figure this out so I don't make a mistake. So it looks like a team could offer to Casey and then I'd have the ability to match it or he just accepts the qualifying offer. I think that somebody will likely give him one but I might as well sit and wait to see if there's something I have to match or if I have to do it next year instead. So could somebody like Jason Tatum be a good player for us to target and just see if Boston can match whatever deal? I might as well make an offer. We have the space it looks like and a skill set of Tatum's would be nice to add to this team. So let's negotiate a deal. We'll add a player option in there. We'll give him... Oh, I can't give a no trade clause. All right. Well, I like to add in player options to make it more player friendly. Why don't we make an offer here then? We talked a lot about Spencer Dinwiddie, so I might make an offer here. All right. So pretty above average here when it comes to the offensive side. And he could play point guard or shooting guard. And I like that flexibility with Daniels. All right, we're going to negotiate here with Spencer Dinwiddie now and give him a two-year deal with a team option in there. I know that it says our cap space is negative, but I think it's factoring in all the players we had expiring and everything else. So I think we're in good shape here with those offers. Let's advance a day. We obviously aren't going to have Patty Mills anymore. We're renouncing those rights. And then we have a cap hold on all these players we could try to bring back. We're probably going to let Deadman go. We can let Alexi Edwin play a little bit more. All right, I think I like what we have here. 
We're letting a lot of players go or renouncing rights. I'll renounce rights on Greg Monroe, but I'm not against bringing him back later on. Royce O'Neal, I would like to keep around to have a good shooter with the second team. So Tatum has decided to sign with the Boston Celtics. And Spencer Dinwiddie's going to the Indiana Pacers. Great start, guys. Oh, yeah, we did not give a very competitive offer to Dinwiddie. I didn't kind of realize how the negotiations would go there. I don't think he had an offer at the time. Maybe there was something I could have seen, but I didn't offer anything close to that. We could try to bring in somebody like De'Aaron Fox, but that'd be really expensive. And he's also a restricted free agent, so they could definitely match whatever the Kings have already given him a four-year, $110 million contract offer. Yeah, I've talked a lot this season about getting a point guard on this team so we can let Casey Daniels be more of a shooting guard, but I mean, his skills... He has really good all-around skills. It's just that he's a better... You know, he's better shooting off the pass than he is at creating his own shot, so it'd be nice to bring in a point guard that could kind of do that job and he could just shoot what he does best. So, is this the right offseason to fill that kind of need? We don't necessarily need a star at that position, though. I don't think so. A good playmaker here, Monty Morris. He can shoot. Playmaking's good. What do we have for some of these attributes here? Very good shot close. Good mid-range. Not a bad contested shot three. Like... It might be a, a lot cheaper route to go passing IQ, passing accuracy. Maybe Morris could fit that role. We don't need a superstar there. All right, let's give Monty Morris a two-year offer then. See where that goes. We could also look at bringing in somebody like Evan Fournier. I know these are not going to be the most like high-impact moves. I thought we'd have a chance to make one this offseason, but... We didn't see a lot of good restricted or unrestricted free agents. The Lakers already gave Kuzma a huge offer here. Five years, $140 million. I'm not sure if taking a shot on one of these players is the right idea this year. We'll give a one-year offer, though, to Evan Fournier. That wouldn't be a bad move. I also think CJ McCollum would be a nice fit. So I wouldn't mind giving him a one-year deal at the same time. It's just hard to find someone I think that can be a, you know, a building block for the future here unless I were to give a huge restricted deal here that could just get matched. All right, looks like Morris, Fournier, and McCollum all agreed to their short deals. So that helps a little bit. Oh, Tyus Jones is available. He'd also be interesting to add to this team. We already added Morris, though, so I'm not sure we need to. Harry Mann became available after, what, a couple years with the Minnesota Timberwolves? Let's check out his stats. Didn't really get a lot of points. Probably didn't play that many minutes. We have like a minutes per game average. 15 and 12. All right, I offered a small deal, $2 million. It was way lower than the expected. I'm not really uh, used to these bench contracts being so high, but I mean, NBA rosters aren't large, so I might wait on some of the other bench players. I think I'm okay moving on to the next stage as we still have these contracts agreed to, and it doesn't seem that anybody gave an offer to Casey Daniels so he can play on the qualifying offer instead. So Morris is now on the roster. So is McCollum and Fournier. Uh, where's Casey Daniels right now? Okay, so Casey Daniels and Royce O'Neal are just in this spot here. I think I can just sim through free agency now considering we've already made these deals. How come Dinwiddie's available again? I thought he accepted a deal with somebody. Oh, the Pacers had agreed with him but they renounced his rights, so he's available again. Oh, that this is next level stuff for video game sports here. They agreed to a deal, and now that deal's d gone. Oh wow, I can't believe the Hawks let John Collins become available. I was really interested, but he has a two year offer from the Hornets for 25 million a year, so he's not gonna be like uh, a value or anything. 
All right, so we sim through. Casey Daniels accepts the qualifying offer worth $5 million. I'm a little surprised no one signed him to an offer sheet, but we now keep our star, Casey Daniels, and that brings us essentially to the end of free agency. Here's a look at the roster now. Unfortunately, we did not have the chance to add a superstar like I had hoped. Maybe there was an opportunity out there you think I could have taken advantage of, but there weren't many unrestricted free agents to go after. Paul George had an option, and it just didn't seem like the best offseason to make the big splash. A lot of the big names just stayed where they were. Ultimately, I thought there were a few players that would make us a more dynamic offense, and then also perhaps we could end up trading CJ McCollum or maybe him and Evan Fournier later on at the deadline. It's definitely not what I pictured this offseason, but I don't think the draft or free agency gave us the best opportunities this year. So we have some player progression at least to look at now. Valanchunas became an even better rebounder and he went up in overall. I thought he was an 85 though. It says 84 and then a plus one. Maybe he's regressing a little bit or something. But he only has a couple years left on this deal. Should be fine. And then Casey Daniels. Inside game went to A-. minus. He got plus four in overall. Yeah, Casey's going to be somebody I look to sign to a big deal next offseason. His whole offensive skill set is getting better. He's a star. Frederick Wilcox is an 80 overall player. His inside game got better. And now... Looks like A- minus or A+, plus mid-range, and three-point shooting. Defense is getting better, and I thought that we saw him play solid defense last year. Rodney Kane is an 80 overall. Not bad. And again, his offense just kind of gets better across the board. I wonder about Alexi Edwin a little bit as we scroll down. B- minus inside, B+, plus inside defense, B+, plus rebounding. All right, Alexi Edwin. I wonder if it's worth giving him the untapped potential this year to maybe grow into being our starting center of the future. Wow. Why was he playing in the Summer League? Frederick Wilcox, twisted right knee. Another injury for Wilcox. I don't know what's up. And I don't know why he was playing in the Summer League. And we got knocked out in the first round. We haven't done well in the Summer League. And the winner this year is, as Wilcox is back, it is the Pittsburgh Force. Oh, we're hosting the All-Star Game this year. Okay. We'll see if we have anybody actually go to it this time. And then we can auto-generate the rookies again. I increased draft class quality, so hopefully it's stronger this year. Um, we'll simulate the 2K Hoop Summit. And now, training camps. I am going to give the untapped potential here to Alexi Edwin and see what that can do. That increases his potential up to a B. But I think I'll actually change it up for our next one for the first time. I think we're going to give the perimeter shooting camp to Rodney Kane. Especially with the Wilcox injury situation, I want someone else that can kind of play that role and do a lot of the things that he does well. So Kane, his shooting skills get a little bit better. Really good open mid-range now. Open threes getting stronger. So hopefully that was a good move. I feel like it was necessary to change it up this year. And it looks like we're ready to advance to the new season. And what do we have here? We can sign free agents to the minimum. We need 14 players. We can take care of this. Okay, so I left us with 10 million in salary cap. Because it does so much projection with the salary cap based on whose rights you're announcing and the cap holds and everything, like I kept saying negative nine cap space, which I knew wasn't like right, but I never really knew how much room I had here in terms of salary. And do we still have dead money for Courtney Lee? That's still a thing? I thought it was done after last season. So the first player here I want to sign is Daryl Macon, a shooting guard. I just want someone who can take some shots coming off the bench if we ever need him to. But this is just to fill out the bottom of the roster. 
And last, we will sign Jordan McRae to a one-year contract. And that finishes up the offseason, essentially. It wasn't exactly what I expected. It was a tough offseason just from being able to make the moves that I had hoped we could make. But it looks like now we're not going to be a really good team this year, most likely. But I do like this roster and how it kind of fits together. So I'm interested in getting onto the court and seeing what this team can do. We've now made it to the new season and we'll be taking on the defending champs twice in our first three games and three times in the first month of the season. So it'll be fun to get on the court next episode. Opening night tip off. And let's go over now our starting lineup for this year. We're going to see Casey Daniels, of course, and then CJ McCollum. We're going to have Frederick Wilcox. And then Rodney Kane is still going to start. So all in all, it really looks a lot like last year's starting lineup. I know. Just swap out Brogdon for McCollum. On the bench, we have Robertson. We still have Jonah Bolden. Now Fournier and Morris. That's where it gets different this year. And I wonder if adding those two will make that second team a little bit better. I don't know, I kind of feel like this wasn't a very good offseason for me, but I wonder what I could have exactly done better. But I hope that you're still looking forward to what is to come here in this series. I think that this again could be a, a fast moving season that doesn't take a ton of time. And we can continue to see this team develop a little bit. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments section. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the episode and if you are looking forward to more San Diego surf basketball and subscribe to the channel and check out more of the content I do over here on youtube.com slash Mr. Hurricane LP. With that, everybody, I will see you all next time. Have a great day. See you again soon.